the last uh, exercise on our list, the seventh one, is the measuring the concentration of suspended, so PM10 or respirable PM2 and a half fraction of particulate matter. You probably know the difference between PM10 and PM2 and a half. So PM10 is the diameter, so the particles lower than 10 micrometers, and the PM2 and a half is the samples is the particles uh, smaller than two and a half micrometers uh, here i have three measuring heads the first one is this measuring head to collect uh, the total suspended particles so we have only the head that is uh, uh, protecting uh, the equipment from the very big particles, higher than 100 micrometers. The second one is PM10. So we have the head, which is, which is collecting the samples, the particles, lower than 10 micrometers. And it looks like this. I also have here the head for PM1. So you see the difference between PM1 and PM10. The difference is, is in the diameter of the measuring or the collecting head. The particles bigger than in this case one micrometer and in another case bigger than 10 micrometers are collected on this part on the circle it is stick with the silicone to perform this exercise you need also the filter there are different types of filters there are teflon filters And this is how it looks, the teflon filter. This is it is very thin and very delicate. And those two are glass and quartz filters. On the first look, you don't see the difference. But if you want to determine the concentration, not only dust, but also the content on the dust, for example, heavy metals, you need to use the proper filter. If you want to make more determinations of other contaminants, you'll need quartz filter because quartz is cleaner than glass. Of course, the difference is also in price. So the glass filter is the cheapest and the, the highest price is for the Teflon filters. So what do we do? We will use the sampler. I will show you in the moment the sampler but we need to first we have to wave the filter so we use the balance to wave the filter first before exposition and next after exposition there are different types of balance you would use this one in the laboratory but there is also more professional balance in the waving room You can wave even one microgram.
to expose the filter we don't put the filter into the sampler like this but we need you we use the holder the holder looks like this you have to open it and you put the filter into the holder close the holder and this is the standard holder it is used in the monitoring station in polish monitoring stations next there are two types of uh, samplers uh, we will use the sampler for the mm, 14 or even 15 uh, samples which can be collected but there are also smaller equipment smaller samplers when you use only one filter per measurement in our sampler we put our filter holder into the cassette and then the cassette is taken to the sampler and then exposed for 24 hours to collect our sample here is how the sampler look like we have our measurement pads, we have to put it on the top and we turn on the sampler. In the time we can change the cassette, we have filters here and then we have to program the use of the sampler. So we first we look at the, if there is a proper date. So today is the 7th of May, the hour is also cor uh, correct. Next we choose the, uh, the work type. First we work uh, manually and the second is the part as a gasometer. We choose the third one, so we want to uh, turn on the uh, sampler on the proper hour and then turn off uh, automatically uh, as we have uh, determined. So we choose the third one, we have to press enter and here we have, we have to put the date Now we uh, determine the time of work, so work time. When we want the 24 hour measurements, uh, we need uh, 1440 minutes. And we also determine the time of break because there is at least one minute or two minute break when uh, the sampler changes the filter. We will take only the short time I will to show you how the filters are changing. So we will put here, for example, two minutes of work and enter, and one minute of break. Also, have to confirm by enter. Okay. So now the, the cassette goes down, and the sample sampler takes the filter. and it will start to work. The important thing in the sampler is the flow. It has to rise to 2.3 cubic meter per hour.
check what are the data. So when you press one, you've got the volume of air in cubic meter and the time. And when you press two, you've got the volume of air which went through the filter, but in the standard uh, conditions. Of course, the time also. When you enter three, you've got the pressure atmospheric pressure in hectopascals and you've got the t t t uh, a it means the ambience of the uh, temperature of air and this is the temperature of the equipment the other numbers are connected with the parameters of the sampler so what happens next next you take cassette and you take it to the laboratory the important thing is that when you have the uh, cassette in the laboratory you cannot wave the filter just when you came to laboratory they have to be conditioned after two minutes it's still clear the filter is clear but I have put some filters after which were exposed by your colleagues last year after 24 hours they look like this when you look at the filters you even see the difference if there was a colder day or a warmer day when you see the colder day the filter is darker it is connected with soot, so unburned coal, which is in, in the flue gases. So what you have to do, you have to put the filters in the exsicatory. And wait 48 hours. And after 48 hours, so after they are uh, they conditioned, uh, you can wave the filter on the balance.